His name is Cedrin. Uh, I did random roll for race uh, using the Google random number generator from 1 to 10, and we rolled a Breton. Uh, I also did random roll for preset, and I rolled a 10 on that, and that gives him a bit of a, in my opinion anyway, forlorn, sort of weather-beaten face here. So I decided for backstory on this one uh, that he is an orphan from High Rock. Uh, he found himself an indentured servant, uh, mostly working as a stable hand. Uh, he got a little bit jealous of all the knights that he saw, all the Breton knights that he saw returning from their uh, high-profile journeys and all the fame and glory and fortune that they were finding out on their quests. So um, he decided he mucked one too many stables and uh, decided to steal a sword and a shield and as much gold as he could carry in his pouches. Uh, and he stole off in the middle of the night uh, to make his own uh, story. So that is his backstory there. Um, now for everything else, I used... I used uh, Unbound's random start mechanic, uh, and they plopped us here, which I think is the western corner of Lake Illinalta. Indeed. Um, and let's see, as far as equipment that it gave us, it gave us uh, just your basic iron sword, uh, a hide shield, some basic clothing here. Uh, a little bit of potions in terms of stamina and health, which is always a good thing, starting off just in case. Um, we got some food. Uh, we got a torch and a couple lockpicks. And of course a whole bunch of gold because he is uh, a thieving scoundrel. <laughs> now I don't think we're going to be doing much thieving with him. Um, and then in terms of magic we did get some good spells uh which is good so a lot of times that i roll these random starts with unbound i don't get any magic and if i do get magic i'll get something like clairvoyance which is almost useless if you know your way around the game already uh so we did get fury which is great uh starting off with um and healing which is also helpful um, and then in terms of the stone that we were given, we got the Ritual Stone, which is also fortunate. The Ritual Stone does tend to be quite powerful. Um, so as we've seen in the Jagasta playthrough, it will gather up the spirits of the dead around us, and when we enter combat, uh, those spirits will be summoned to fight for us. So that will help uh, get some battlefield distraction for us, take some heat off of us. Uh, and as this is permadeath, that's a, that's always a good thing. Um, also as Breton, uh, we have the Stones of Galen. So as a Breton passive, uh, you get an extra effect on the stone that you have chosen. Uh, and for the Ritual Stone, uh, Shrine Blessings are four times more effective, but only last for five minutes. So. Kind of a trade-off there. Uh, if we see a shrine that we can uh, become blessed at, we will definitely take those as we go. So that indicates that Cedron here is a bit of a pious guy. Um, so we may go paladin, cleric type thing a little bit. Um, seeing as how his backstory uh, is that he was jealous of the knights, coming back into High Rock from their adventures, I think that he fancies himself a bit of an aspiring knight. Um, so I think we're going to go heavy armor with this. It will help keep us alive when we do get hit. I will be taking spells as they become available, ones that will help, but I'm going to try to focus mainly on illusion and restoration. So we... Uh, priority number one is to find a follower. Skyrim is a big, dangerous province, and Cedrin is one Lord Breton, or one lone Breton. He's not a lord. He is not a noble. Um, he is a lone Breton, unarmored, uh, very lightly trained, doesn't have much combat experience at all. 
Uh, I'm going to use my own knowledge of the game um, to give Cedrin here an extrasensory hint that he needs to follow Lake Illinalta to the east um, and find a small town called Riverwood. There's a dead mud crab. That means that there is... Oh, yep, there's the other skeleton. Okay, so one hit from the skeleton there took a third of our life. So there you go. That's legendary difficulty at level one with no armor for you. Iron Shield. We do have plenty of money to pay for all this. Let's focus first on actual armor. He doesn't have any regular iron armor. He does have steel armor. That's going to take uh, just about a third of our gold, though. But you know what? That's worth it. Um, iron boots. We can go with the steel cuffed boots for 167. Let's do that. We're going to blow through our entire huge supply of gold here. <laughs> But, you know, if it, if it helps us take a hit, it's well worth it. He's looking a little more knightly already. Here's our steel shield. Look at that. Breton knight in the making. I like it. Alright, priority number one. Finding a buddy. Well, then you're in luck. I do need a companion. I reckon I've killed more men. And you look dangerous. Minutes in a day. And you sound dangerous too. Alright, so what do you say we do this whole uh, seeking fortune and glory thing together? Sounds like we both are in need of a companion, yeah? Let's go. Alright. Okay, so priority one complete. We have a buddy to watch our back uh, and to crack some skulls for us. And, uh, more importantly, keep our skull from being cracked. <laughs> okay, so priority two, I think, is going to try to find a base of operations. And um, in this profile, I do have Ryak's End available for us. I don't know how cheaty this is. Um, it doesn't give us any kind of advantage in combat, but having... Um, a safe space to um, sort of plan our next moves and store all our stuff uh, is a good thing, I think, and will uh, help facilitate this playthrough a little further. It's not going to play a heavy part in this series. Uh, it's just a place where I can drop off some stuff um, and get equipped for our next adventure. Um, planning ahead for... Um, our next dungeon crawl, uh, our next combat encounter is going to be a very big part of this series, I think. So the next order of business. Okay, so that's priority number one and priority number two. We have a base of operations. We have uh, a strong companion to help us out in our travels. Um, and now it's just time to start making a name for ourselves. So now we're going to get into the real danger. Yeah. All right. Here we go, here we go. Keep our keep our guard up here. Go for those timed blocks. There was a power attack there, and I'm getting locked in by my companions. Okay. Now these enemies should be uh, far enough away. There's enough terrain for them to have to navigate that uh, I should have time to pull out my shield and get ready for the frontal assault if I miss. We did not miss. Okay, great. Excellent. Okay, this other guy should be at full health, though. Okay, I'm gonna go try to flank him. Try to get some of that one-handed skill leveled up there. He's an orphan. Um, he's very disgruntled with his uh, life as a indentured farm servant. We'll let them engage over there. Missed with a fury twice. Um, so things like um, Hearthfire, uh, becoming Thane, will be quite important to him. I don't know, what was that? 
Oh, really? Come back from the dead just to mine some ore for me? <laughs> Still do the random start, but uh, part of the challenge is how do I get there? Oh man. There we go. All right. All right, let's get in there, Gore. They should both soften each other up enough that uh, they shouldn't be too bad. Where are you, Gore? Oh, this guy is kind of tough. Okay, dungeon number one clear. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and work our uh, block and one-handed skill on this. Crap, oh my god. Did we die to a mud crab? we die to a mud crab? Oh my god. <laughs> no. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. We gotta start with health here. Oh my god. I didn't take the, the potion. Okay. You're very, very correct there. <laughs> All right, I gotta go vomit and then take a nap, and I'll be back in about an hour. So on and so forth. Uh, for a permadeath on le legendary difficulty, you bet your sweet took us. I am going to take advantage of that heavily. Grumpy Morrow and Deletus. <laughs> uh, I think you might be right on the nose with that one there, Simba. <laughs> um, Oblivion had a uh, a similar mechanic too, where you'd have to rest in order to quote meditate on what you. Uh... Gore, where are you? There you are. Meditate on what you've learned, is what the game said. And you can only level up out of combat uh, when you slept. Okay, looks like they've already spotted us, which is fine. Let's um, try to avoid their arrows here. They can't be as tough as that mud crab, right? Famous last words. Try to lead them a little bit. Boom, nice shot, huh? Let's see if I can get them to turn around and... Wow, Ritual Stone is OP, right? See if I can get this back. There we go. Lord Daka, welcome, friend. You almost missed the end of Cedron at the claws of a mud crab, of all things. in the way. There we go. That should be game over, but I'm going to remain vigilant here, just in case. That's right, soften each other up. Kill shot.
And before I step foot in there, I am going to take my own advice and buff myself up with some of these potions here. All right, here we go. All right, we gotta dodge his poison shots here. Okay, Ritual Stone is helping us out a lot here. Well, he was. Yo, okay, that was really close. Gore, you want to help out here a little bit? Mm -hmm. No, nope, that's bad, that's bad. Okay. Alright, he didn't poison me though. Don't know why he's ignoring Gore so much. <laughs> okay, that was tense. We didn't come close to dying there, but that was really tense. Okay, here we go. Gotta focus, gotta focus. Let's go, friend. Now, are the Draugr going to be affected by Fury is a big question I have right now. Oh, okay. Well, Giant Frost Spider fighting on our side is uh, a major boom. I do want to see if Fury is going to affect the Draugr. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Here. Was that effective? Doesn't look like it was, if it didn't say that it wasn't though. I'll have to reassess. Uh okay, this is a higher level Draugr. Usually this probably at this level it would be a restless Draugr. Um But if we can engage this guy up here, it shouldn't trigger those guys down there. But uh we do we can fall back on this uh swinging great trap over here to help wipe them out and to buy us a little more space and to hopefully get uh, Gore engaged if it does trigger those other Draugr down there. Oh, there's Arvel. Oops, I just killed Arvel again. <laughs> really coming after us. Okay, now there is a Draugr Archer in there a little bit farther. We gotta be careful of. Try to stay out of the line of sight for them. And I am running my reformulated Uncapper INI for blocks, so that should be keeping pace with the rest of our skills there, too. Okay. Uh, I know Fury doesn't work on these guys, but I can use it to trigger aggro on the Draugr here and also knock a lamp into the oil there. Okay, trigger aggro. We'll see if we can get them to funnel through this narrow corridor here. Okay, Cedric shown some moves here. Uh, he's trying to make a name for himself, not trying to stifle his name. <laughs> I don't know why I tried to fury him just now. Um, but I, I do think that uh, Cedric here will join the companions once he once he discovers them. Training is something that's also overlooked, much like the uh, the passives you get from um, from potions. Uh, training gets overlooked a lot. Uh, a lot of people like to say that the economy in Skyrim is broken, which it is, for sure. <laughs> uh, but it also um, it helps to know that you have, if you train regularly, and try to make the most use of of trainers for every level that you have. Um, you end up going through gold really, really quickly. Especially at higher levels. Okay, uh, that's another high level Draugr in there. Let's see if we have any... Resist fire is not going to help. Poison of Paralysis, Potion of Feather, Health Fortification. Uh, so we'll probably take the, the fortitude and maybe the fortification here for this fight. 
Maybe the Ritual Stone will help us out a little bit here. Uh, but this can be a tough fight. Uh, let's try to stay light on our feet. Get buffed up here. Alright, Gore, I'm going to need you to pick up some slack here. Oh, great. We got Skeevers, which are not going to last long at all. Okay, he is engaged with Gore now. Keep Gore in the game as long as possible by trying to keep that Draugr in stun lock. Okay, so I'm going to need to sprint my way through that. Um, there's only two swinging, swinging blades there, so we should be able to get that, get through that without being too scathed. Uh, we're gonna keep. Um, Finally, some action. We're going to keep. Let's go. Friend. Gore here as backup. Uh, I think what we're gonna do is run through here. We're going to try to pull the chain to stop the trap. That's going to trigger the Draugr in the sarcophagus to the left, and we're going to run back here um, to get Gore's help with that if we need it. Get some pot shots in there. <laughs> and run away. All right, Gore. Here they come. All right. The two-handed fellas hit hard, but they have a lot of wind-up. You can usually bash them out of whatever they're trying to do there. Oh, yeah, right behind you there. I'm not hearing any chanting. Are we close enough yet? Okay, I don't think we can read Dragon Walls. Okay, so Cedrin is not Dragonborn. Get as many pot shots in there as we can. He does shout, he's got a lot of health. Try to stay behind him. He's got an enchanted weapon there. He's injured. Okay. Well done. Classic pincher maneuver, huh? 